Welcome to K. Elizabeth Toasts, a podcast celebrating people who increase our quality of life. I'm your host, K. Elizabeth, a licensed counselor, coach, and PhD who is interested in what people do to make others' lives better through the lens of the five social determinants of health. The World Health Organization says these five social determinants can impact up to 55% of our health outcomes. In this episode, our guest shares how they impact the social determinant of economic stability. Give a listen if you need a dopamine hit, or if you like toast, because this toasts for you. My name is Rachel Pruch, and um, I live in South Carolina. Volunteering speaks to my heart, and it's I feel like it's something that I have always been called to do. I'm I'm not happy unless I'm volunteering. It brings like a certain type of dopamine when you can help somebody else. What kind of volunteering have you done? I have done a few different a few different things. I started out young. I started out as a candy striper. And I went on from a candy striper at a local hospital. I'm from Oklahoma and I went from being a candy striper at a local hospital to reading books at elementary schools, to calling bingo during the holidays at nursing homes. And then after my mother passed away, I volunteered at Claire House in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And I think that that's what really got me into wanting to do something more, Mm -hmm. wanting to do something more, be something more. And it was a hospice type house. You know, my mom passed away there, but the way that she was treated, the moment that we walked through the door, she was treated like she was the most important person ever. They don't treat the people that come there as um, patients. They are guests. They are treated as guests. And my mom said to me, I feel like I'm Alice and this is Wonderland. And the way that they spoke to her, how they treated her with such dignity and respect and love, um, that was such a meaningful thing to me and it helped me get through that process. And um, I worked the front desk and I also was a friendly visitor. And so um, it just when you're able to sit with people who are at the end of their lives and it might be somebody who didn't have the opportunity to have visitors, it's just an amazing thing. And I became a Claire House ambassador. So I actually got to go and speak at locations about my, my history with Claire House and what it meant to me and what it meant to my mom because my mom passed away there. And it just, it, it made me want to go out and try to get other people to have the same mindset and heart that I had. I wanted people to volunteer. I wanted people to have that happiness and that peacefulness that I felt. Yeah. I volunteered there for a long time and I even um, got a presidential uh, volunteer award for my hours of volunteering. Wow. Um, So, we moved to South Carolina and I needed to have something for my heart and I volunteered at Project Toast for a while. Um, That was just for a short time and it's a funny story because I did that because I got a speeding ticket and that's how they let me out. I did community service. That's amazing. I loved it. And so I continued to do it even after my community service hours were over because Project Toast is an awesome organization as well. It is a, um, like a soup kitchen here. Yeah. And they are, they're amazing. And the meals that they prepare are fantastic. And I actually, they normally have a very long list of volunteers who want to serve, um, so I only was able to serve twice, I think, but I got to cook a lot. And that was really to cook and to prep. And 
it was just that was a really humbling experience you never know how much you have until you see somebody who doesn't yeah and so it was a very humbling experience and then in 2017 i was diagnosed with breast cancer and i just i don't know um i wasn't volunteering and i wasn't really doing i mean i was working i worked the full time i really didn't tell anybody that i had cancer Mm -hmm. i had my surgery i went through radiation i went through my treatments and then i realized that i needed support i found casting for recovery and i was chosen as an alternate i wasn't chosen the first round i was chosen as an alternate in 2018 to go to a retreat because they do fly fishing retreat that was the first time that i felt safe and i felt no judgment talking about my breast cancer diagnosis because I was surrounded by women who were going through the same thing. And I fell in love with every aspect of Casting for Recovery. It was just such a magical experience. I wanted to be a part of it and making it so magical for other people. And so I started taking pictures that next year. I am not a photographer at all, but just getting that opportunity to be there and capture moments was really fun. Ha. If you're not a photographer, how are you get started taking photos for this then? I had a cell phone and I had a camera. <laughs> and <laughs> I feel and I like I can do this. That's yeah, amazing. absolutely. It, it just was fun. Like it, it was fun capturing moments. I just ran with it. It just was a super cool way to break into volunteering. (laughs) That's amazing. I wanted to do more. And so I started fundraising. I became um, a co-program coordinator and I started fundraising. And I just kind of, anybody and everybody who would listen to me, I told them about Casting for Recovery. I told them what we use the money for and anybody that would hear me out I would ask for money (laughs) I would ask for events we were able to get a couple of really great um local places that did fundraisers for us the clock tower taproom and billiards and Simpsonville South Carolina did a fundraiser for us and then invited me back every year and so I've done it I believe four times now Um, And he told me that as long as I'm fundraising for someone, that he would be more than happy to host our fundraiser. And he's just such a giving person as well that it's, that's been awesome. And we actually had I Am My Sister's Raw fundraiser there this year. One of my friends, Her name is Alicia Long, created I Am My Sister's Bra um, in honor of her sister who had passed away from breast cancer. Her mission with her organization is to be the support for uninsured breast cancer patients through transportation aid, copay reimbursement, assistance, and mental health support. And they have a program called Bra Strap. And that's how they do it all. And that's why they raise the monies is to really be able to support uninsured breast cancer patients and to make sure that they have the same support and the same opportunities that all women should have. Wow, that's incredible. She's really able to talk about the disparity in what somebody who is blonde hair, green eyed, and looks like me, as opposed to a minority that goes in, um, what type of care we might both be offered and the way that the doctors would listen to us. So it just really spoke to me that I wanted, I wanted to be a part of it. And she's such an amazing, powerful person that I just really wanted, you know, whatever I could do, I wanted to do 
And so I did a fundraiser for her. I also did the walks with her because she has a walk every year to raise money for her foundation. I feel like fundraising is a thankless job. No one wants to do it and no one enjoys doing it. So for you to want to do that is pretty incredible to me. It really is. It took a while. It took a while to realize that, hey, this is fun. And we even <laughs> called our we even called our fundraiser. It was fun raiser. We're gonna fun raise raiser. Raise, and raise the money. So yeah. So could I ask you to kind of break down for me? Let's say that someone doesn't have any experience doing fundraising. Um, or um, drives, right? How does someone get started doing that? How did you get started doing it? The fundraising was really scary for me, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. Um, because nobody likes to hear no. How it actually happened with the clock tower is me and one of my friends, um, we had gone shopping and we went into clock tower and we saw a cancer can hanging on his um, Christmas tree. A cancer can? Yeah, there was a local beer that made um, beer cans that had a cancer saying on them. It may have been F cancer. Yeah, got it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was hanging on his Christmas tree. And I said, oh, well, that's cool. Do you, is that something that you did for a fundraiser or tell me, tell me about that can. And he told me, and he told me that they had done a, um, I believe it was American Cancer Society or Greenville Cancer Society. They had done a fundraiser and I was like, oh, hey, so you do fundraisers. Would you be interested in doing a fundraiser? And I just kind of asked. And honestly, after that first ask, and he said yes. He gave me like that push that I needed because then I went door to door in downtown Simpsonville asking for donations for our fundraiser. Wait. For our raffles. Literally? You went door to door? Yes. I went door to door in the um, downtown Simpsonville to all of the little stores and the restaurants and everywhere asking for um, raffle prizes. And I got a ton. We had such a supportive, such a supportive group. And because of that, I could handle the no's because I was getting yeses too. And I just invited people. I invited them to the event and then it was like, Oh, by the way, we would love to have you come to our event and we're giving away raffle prizes. We would love to focus on local businesses and to get you some impact as well, to get you some foot traffic. So not only would I like you to come to my event, but it would be awesome if you would like to donate something to the event as well. Wow. So it just, it started working out that way. So did you know that you were going to be doing fundraising? No. So you literally we walked into it. a store and you were like, hey, this guy doesn't like cancer either. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so what's so funny is kind of the owner of the bar, his name is Eddie. He made fun of the sweatshirt that I was wearing. And he's like, haha, you're already, you know, you're already ready with your ugly Christmas sweater. And I was like, hey, this is my finest shirt I own. It was a sweatshirt and it was the Christmas vacation sweatshirt. Yeah. And I was National like, National Lampoons? Is National Lampoon, yeah. Yeah. And I was like, this is the finest piece of clothing I own. <laughs> this is my dressy shirt. And so we just started laughing and then I saw that and I was like, hey, would you ever want to do a fundraiser for us? And I explained to him who we were and he's like, yeah, absolutely. Well, this is amazing. Like you did a fundraiser on a whim. I did. I did. I, I scheduled a fundraiser on a whim and it just started falling into place after that. When we were looking for something to do at work, 
over Christmas, we were looking for an organization to help the Shepherd's Gate. It's an organization that helps displaced women and children. And so the first time that we donated, there were 60 people staying there, 60 women and children staying there. Um, and we brought food donations. That was our first donation. And then we found out, hey, they need this. They need Tide Pods. They need instant coffee. They need paper goods. They need trash bags. I mean, it just, we found out that there was a lot that we could help them with. And we decided that we were going to do it for a year and we were going to have quarterly drives. And it's, it's just, again, you, you never know how much you have until you meet somebody that doesn't have it. And even if I couldn't do all the helping myself, I could, with the help of others, get people excited about doing it. Holy cow. I mean, you're talking about everything from a candy striper to raising funds. Like, how do you make a decision about what you're going to do and how you're going to spend your time? Um, if there's a need and they let me. I mean, honestly. Is there anything that you want to make sure that you highlight or note before we make a little transition? I, I think that if somebody were to listen to this and wanted a hobby, wanted to do something, volunteering is a really cool hobby that gives back. Everywhere that I go and volunteer, I gain so much and I feel like it makes me a better person in meeting these people and learning from them. And you can always find something to volunteer at. Google's an amazing thing. <laughs> it might be animals. It might be cancer. It might be elderly. It might be libraries. There's always going to be the need for people to have that passion, to help out, to raise monies, just to be able to help in whatever way I can. And the only help I might be doing is getting a group together to donate. I can't donate all that myself. This is other people. I just think that everybody should volunteer at some point in their life. There are so many opportunities even for kids to do it. Rachel, is there anyone in your life who's really impacted you in a positive way that you want to recognize? There's so many people. My mom, from a young age, always showed us that giving back was very important. And the person who got me into Casting for Recovery, who brought me in and let me take pictures, her name's Mary Turney. And her seeing that... I had, like, I really wanted to be a part of this and her allowing me to kind of come in and do that and showing me the ropes with taking pictures and then starting to volunteer through retreats and just, she was such a positive impact with that, that, I mean, it, on my casting for recovery side, it was a really awesome experience to be able to volunteer with her. Well. Cheers to your mom and cheers to Mary. Thank you. Rachel, for creating a lifelong commitment to volunteering from your candy striping days to your volunteering at the front desk to create a welcoming environment for people at Claire House, to fundraising, to taking photos and encouraging other people to volunteer themselves. By seeing a beer can that says F cancer and having a spur of the moment decision to start doing some fundraising. And for finding where the needs are and meeting those needs. For that, this toast is for you. Cheers, Rachel. Cheers. Thank you so much. Now it's your turn. 
honor someone who has made your life better by recommending them as a guest or by recording a toast to them at ketoasts.com. To positively impact my life and to keep us going, tap the follow button, rate us using a star button, and share this episode with someone who could use some good news. Then, go toast up some bread. Because every positive action is worth toasting. This is Pepper. Hi, Pepper. <laughs> they got a wrecked car, like, and so we sold opportunities to hit it with a sledgehammer. So, I mean, I'm sure that that would not fly anymore in a million years, but back then it was fun. Thank you. You're incredible. You are incredible. <laughs> I can't wait to listen to your podcast. You're incredible. <laughs> and I can't wait to listen to the incredible people that you've interviewed too. So thank you.